Good morning. Today we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 1. And this second letter that Peter wrote, um, he emphasizes for the, for the readers that, you know, to make sure that they're learning truth and that they're trusting truth, not learning, you know, falsehoods. There were false teachers that were out there and around and and you know if if you if you're first told that two plus two equals three and and this is what you start to learn um you know and you get that ingrained in your memory it, it's really hard to ever change that and i mean we all know that two plus two isn't three um but it, it's it, it's one of those easy things that could could happen and could sway us and, and so there were as I said, many false teachers, they, they were saying false things about Jesus, about false things about, you know, having to be circumcised and so, so many different things that were conflicting these early Christians. And so Peter's writing is to reassure them of what is right, to talk a little bit about his own experiences and to show his trust. I mean, Peter was told by Jesus, you know, the kind of death that he would 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 have, and in in, in this, uh, I think it just, even in the first chapter we hear, you know, reference to um, Peter's statement, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." As Jesus said, well, "Who do you say that I am?" When when they were talking, you know, in, in John's Gospel, shortly, you know, on that you know, it was on that night actually uh, that he was betrayed and arrested at you know that what we call Monday Thursday. Uh, we see that, and Peter refers to his seeing Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration and hearing the voice of God. And, and so it's, you know, he's establishing his own authenticity as this disciple of, of Jesus. And, um, but it's, you know, he wanted to confront mostly some of the false things that were being taught so that the people would would know the truth and trust the truth you know and it's it's always you know i mean when you when you hear something and, and it sounds too good to be true i mean and this is one of the things in today's society if it sounds too good to be true it most likely is too good to be true but in the case of jesus i mean he was raised from the dead i mean that sounds too good to be true it sounds too good to be true that, you know, our sins are forgiven in Jesus Christ. We are made righteous. We are sanctified, set apart as perfect and holy by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So Peter wants the people to know the truth, to trust the truth, and to address maybe a little bit of some of what is not right. He starts out, he identifies himself, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ. And and, you know, we all know that his name was Simon and that Jesus said, you will henceforth be called Peter. And, you know, this is the rock, the, the statement of, of Peter, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's the rock that the Christian faith is built upon. So, and, and then in that same first verse, to those who have attained like precious faith with us, the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it's our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, he's from God. And this this is kind of that reference back to you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, in chapter 3, he says, His divine power has given us all things in life and godliness through the knowledge of him, Jesus, who called us by glory. And so it's just, I mean, we are given by Jesus Christ. And this is where all of our blessings come from. Um starting in verse 5 you know it's but for this reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue to virtue add knowledge to knowledge add self-control to self-control add perseverance to perseverance add godliness to godliness add brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness add love i mean it just just you know it's a it, it shows this growth of, of who we are as christians you know, and of the different, some of the virtues, some of the characteristics and the qualities that we should model for other people that way. He says, if these are yours and they abound, you will 
grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and, and, and again, you know, that it's, it's kind of like the fruits of the spirit that, you know, we, we read in Galatians that Paul wrote. Um, and, you know, in verse 12, Peter, you know, talks about his own approaching death, you know, and he's, he's been, well, verse 10, I go back to that a second. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call and your choice sure. Because if you do these things, you won't stumble. You know, when we have that absolute faith in Jesus Christ, even when we sin, and we sin every day, we just, I mean, well, I mean, I do. I don't know about you, but, but when we sin, we know that it's not the end. We know that we can come back and, and ask for forgiveness and, and have that new beginning. And then so verse 12, Paul says, it is because we have that, that I will not be negligent to remind you that these things come and are established in the present truth. And, and he says, as long as I'm in this tent, as long as I'm living in this body on this earth, that's what this, you know, this tent refers to as so other Bibles may not use that word, but he says, I'm here to stir up by you by reminding you that I must die for the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, so he's he's established who he is and his relationship to Christ and his absolute belief in Christ, his his giving himself to Christ. You know, he he's not going to try to run away from this impending death that he's you know looking at, but he's going to be there. And so then, verse sixteen, we start to get into the this is the truth part of it. He says, "We did not." Follow cunningly devised fables. We didn't make up some stories. These aren't myths. You know, these aren't Aesop's fairy tales. These, you know, we didn't. We did not make up devised fables when we made known to you the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of His mercy. You know, and, and so here is is what he's. You know, he says, you know, He received from God the Father glory when this voice came. Um, it says, when his voice came from the excellent glory, and that refers to God, and this is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, as we were on the mountain with him when he was transfigured. I, transfigured. This, and the, the story of transfiguration, I think one of the places it is, is in Matthew 17. If you want to read and reflect or refresh your memories on, on the transfiguration of Jesus with um, Peter, James, and John up there on that mountain. But it's, you know, he's, he's, you know, this is God's own truth, you know, and I, and I stake my life upon it. I mean, you tie this all together with, you know, Peter confessing, I am an apostle and we didn't come to you with lies and with myths. Uh, I come to you, you know, with God's truth by the power of God and I encourage you to grow in these manners. And, and the prophetic word from Jesus was solidified in my mind, you know, that, you know, because when they were on that Mount of Transfiguration, these three, Peter, James, and John, saw Jesus transformed to his full glory and his full brilliance as he'd had in heaven. He was such a, so bright and pure they could, I mean, they couldn't com completely comprehend it. You know, it was so far above what we can picture and envision as humans. But he said we saw that. And, and Jesus told us at that time, don't say anything about this until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. You know, this is, this is an experience that was beneficial for me, but also for you as witnesses. And, um, and, and you will come to know and you will then have a, a time to, to tell. And he concludes this first chapter uh, with, we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you will do well to heed and to believe that a light shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart, knowing this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a private interpretation, for prophecy never comes by the will of man, but only by the will of God. It's spoken, spoken not by man, but by holy men of God, as they are moved by the Spirit. So prophecy, you know, things that will happen, most likely. They're not myths made up, but they come to the holy men of God by the will of God. 
And, and I shouldn't just, you know, it's not just men of God, but women of God, people of God. And, and so it is that, that, that Paul is establishing, and Peter rather, I'm sorry, establishing here that, you know, he is speaking truth. He's speaking out of love and grace, and he's speaking by the will of God, encouraging us to live by the will of God.